So anyways, what I want to talk about tonight is, uh, you know, me and my wife were, we were watching TV at home and we started the series, The Chosen. I don't know if anybody else has uh, started watching that series, but it's really good. It's not like your typical corny Christian movie, okay? And I said that, yes, corny Christian movie, because there's lots of them out there. Even though I like the corny Christian movies, but The Chosen's not like that. Very well made. And um, in, in season one, episode eight, uh, it's, it tells the story of the Samaritan woman at the well. And um, I love that story. I really love that story, and it really resonated a bunch of stuff inside of me. Um, I really love how Jesus went out of his way to meet this woman, regardless of, uh, regardless of her situation, her current situation, regardless of her past uh, decisions that she made. He still went out of his way uh, to see this woman. And uh, that really spoke uh, a lot to me because I can relate to that. Um, you know, for, for me in 2012, um, I was a meth addict. And um, I can remember being in a house um, on Christmas morning and, uh, you know, doing things that I shouldn't have done. My life had taken a turn for just for the worst. And um, this was Christmas morning and my family's calling and they're saying, we just want to be with you. We don't care where you're at right now. We don't care that you're high. We, wa- we just want to be with you. And I, I couldn't even uh, muster up the strength to answer the phone my, my, my voicemail was catching uh, their messages, in, and uh, I was just so riddled with shame and guilt, and I can remember saying to myself, man, this, I, 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 could, I would rather be dead than, than live at this point. And I can remember my spirit just crying out to a God that I didn't even know. Just saying, God, if you're there, will you come and make a way for me, please? I will do anything. And I really hear that in this story, too. I can really hear the Samaritan woman's spirit crying out for Jesus in this. And he sees her pain. He sees her despair. And he goes out of his way to meet her, and it just really, it really meant a lot to me. Now, for me, uh, shortly after that Christmas morning, less than a month later, Jesus came and met me. And he brought me to Life Recovery Ministries, and I gave my life to him. And that was about it. That was eight and a half years ago, a very special day. And so there's a there's a there's a there's a common ground here that really moved me. Um, and I'm going to show the clip at the end of the sermon so you guys can see that same thing. I don't know about you, but when I can see something, uh, it it pro- I process it a lot better. I can still read something and process it, but if I can see it, if I can see the facial expressions, if I can see the way uh, Jesus moved this, this woman, it impacted me in a big way, and I want you guys to have that tonight too. So we're going to watch that here in a little bit. But first, we're going to go into the verses, um, and it's, uh, we're going to start off in John 4, verse 4. And he said, and he had to pass through Samaria. I can't even read that. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to read out of the Bible. (laughs) Luckily, Steve's Bible's up here and the print's like this big. So I can see this. And I'm sure Steve's watching right now. So I love you, Steve. We missed you. Have a good time. Okay? Love you. I'm going to hear about that one later. Oh, my phone's vibrating right now. I bet that was him. No, I'm just joking. And he had to pass through Samaria, so he came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his sons Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, being wearied from his journey, was sitting thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink, since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God 
and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Now I want to stop right there, and I want to go into a little bit of what, what we just read here. There's, there's, a, there's an exchange that he is offering right here. There's a transaction that he's offering. He's saying, if you give me a drink of water, I will give you a drink of water in return. If you give me your life, I will give you eternal life. And there's this transaction that takes place. Everybody say transaction. Regardless, we already know what's coming, coming, uh, coming next is that he reads her mail. And that he says, and that he already, regardless, he already knows that she's been married five times, that she's living with a man that's not her husband, and he still wants to make this transaction with her. He still wants to make this exchange. He still thinks that her life is valuable enough to save. He still wants to have relationship with her amidst all the garbage. And I think a lot of us can relate to that where we've fallen short in our life, where we've made bad decisions, where our past wants to continually haunt us. But I just want to encourage you tonight and just say that, you know, he sees that, but he still wants to make a transaction with you. He still wants to make that exchange with you. And he's asking you tonight to give your life to him fully. And in return, he will give you eternal life. So we're going we're gonna to read further. Verse 11. She said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you, who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of this of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to the eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so I will not be thirsty, no, nor come all the way here to draw. And see, we run into an issue right here. Is that she doesn't quite understand who Jesus is at this time. She still doesn't understand that she's standing in front of the Messiah. Jesus. And so she still has this worldly perspective. She doesn't quite understand that he, the water that he gives her is eternal life. She has this worldly perspective of saying, well, you don't even have a bucket. Well, the well is too deep. And how many times have we said that in our lives where we've made this exchange with Jesus? We've said, well, we give you my life. And then he gives us instruction back. He tells us to do something. He tells us to follow him. And we say, well, Jesus, the well is too deep. You don't even have a bucket. And we have this misunderstanding of who Jesus is and his, and his abilities. I can remember when uh, I, I gave my life to Jesus, and then Jesus said, okay, I want you to go into ministry, and I want you to lay your job down. And I can remember going, but I can't pay my bills. How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to survive? And I might as well have been just saying, well, Jesus, the well is too deep. You don't even have a bucket, Jesus. I might as well have been just saying, well, Jesus, you can't fulfill those things that that job can fulfill. And how many times do we do that with our stuff? How many times do we do that with our fears, with our anxieties? A couple months later, he said, you know what, Nick, this, this car that you got, this brand new car that you got with this big old payment, it's getting in the way of me and you. It's a distraction. I want you to go take that car back. But Jesus, how am I going to get to the river to go swimming? How am I going to take my buddies for a ride? How are we going to look cool? How am I going to survive without a vehicle? 
And once again, I might as well have just been saying, Jesus, the well is too deep for you. And we have this misunderstanding of who he is. If he says to do it, then we should do it. If he says to go, then we should go. Without question, without a weary heart, we have an understanding of who he is. Jesus, you want me to lay my job down? Well, then you must have a bigger plan for me. And he did. Jesus, if you're telling me to take my car back, well, then you must have a way for me. And he did. Sometimes that looked like walking, but that's all right. He's worth walking for, right? Actually, I got a uh, Nissan Pathfinder that was all blown out on one side. It was a humbling experience, but it was good for me. It was good. It was good. And then in 15, I'm going to read it again. I think it's important. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so I will not be thirsty nor come all the way here to draw. This is classic, classic Christianity where we say, I will give you my life, Jesus, if that means that my life is easy, right? That's what she's saying here. I don't got to go to the well no more and draw water. I don't have to be thirsty anymore. And you're going to make my life easier. Okay, let's do this. And once again, there's just this misunderstanding with this transaction that he's trying to make. But he moves her into this place of transparency that's so powerful. Everybody say transparency. He reveals all the things that she's done. He tells her to go get her husband. And she says, I don't have a husband. And, she, and he says, you're right. You've had five husbands. And the man that you're living with today is not your husband. And he reveals to her that he knows everything. He knows all of her secrets. He knows all of her sin. And he wants to get her to this place of transparency, this understanding that there's no secrets with him. With this exchange, with this, transition, this, this transaction that he's calling us to, there has to be transparency. There has to be an openness, a willingness for him to be, see all of us. And I think what we do with our stuff, especially our stuff from our past, is we just tuck it away, right? We don't allow him into that area. Steve calls it mushrooms in the closet. What do mushrooms do is they grow in the dark. They grow in the closet. And that's what our, that's what our past failures have the ability to do to us is they grow. And what do they grow into? Well, they grow into more sin. They grow into shame. They grow into guilt. And then that sin, shame, and guilt becomes the dictator of our life. It becomes the direction of our life. It did for her. She went to the well midday every day. Now, normally people would go to the well in the early morning when it was cool, and then they would nap in the afternoon, which is, sounds nice, right? <laughs> who, who gets to do that, nap in the midday? My little baby boy gets to. But, but um, she, she went to the well in the middle of the day because her shame and her guilt became the dictator of her life. She didn't want to be seen by the other Samaritan ladies because she was so ashamed of what her life had become. And so he's calling her to this transparency, this openness. Let's get rid of this. Let's lay this down. And it's her job to respond to that. Because when there's a transaction made and there's trans transparency through that, 
there's then transformation. There's transformation. There's transformation within ourselves, within our hearts, within our lives. We're going to go to the clip. And so those of you that are on live, I'm sorry, you can't watch this because of, because of copyrights. But I encourage you to go to episode one. No, season one, episode eight. Give me a drink. Did you hear me? That's bad, huh? What? You, would you ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan? And a woman? I'm sorry. I should have said please. You know, it's not safe for you to be alone out here. Nor you. Why haven't you come with others? Why so late in the day? Don't women come to the wells in the, the cool of the morning? Yeah, well, none of them will be seen with me, so I have to come at noon in the heat, as you have so kindly reminded me. Why won't they be seen with you? Long story. I'd, I'd still like a drink of water if, if you can spare it. Amazing what a parched throat will do. Aren't I unclean to you? Won't you be defiled by this vessel? Maybe some of my people say that about your women, but I don't. Yeah? And what do you say? I say if you knew who I am, you'd be asking me for a drink. Really? And I would give you living water. Would. Except that you have nothing to draw water with, and this is a deep well. Besides, what do you need from me if you have your own supply of living water? Wrong story. But Jewish water is better than Samaritan water. Hmm? That's not what I said. Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well? Your water is better than his? I know, Jacob. And everyone who drinks this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. Wouldn't that be nice? The water I give will become in a person a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Really? Yes, really. Prove it. First, go and call your husband and come back. I will show you both. I don't have a husband. You are right. You've had five husbands. And the man you're living with now is not your husband. <laughs> oh, I see. You're a prophet. You're here to preach at me. No. Usually the one good thing about coming here alone is I can escape being condemned. I'm not here to condemn you. I've made mistakes. Too many. But it's men like you who have made it impossible for me to do anything about it. How? Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews insist Jerusalem is the only place for true worship. They say that because the temple is there. Yeah, exactly where we're not allowed. I'm here to break those barriers. And the time is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. So, where am I supposed to go when I need God? 
I'd never received anything from God, but I couldn't thank him, even if I did. Anywhere. God is spirit. And the time is coming and is now here. That it won't matter where you worship, but only that you do it in spirit and truth. Heart and mind, that, that is the kind of worshiper he's looking for. It won't matter where you're from or what you've done. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Until the Messiah comes and explains everything and sort this mess out, including me, I don't trust in anyone. You're wrong when you say that you've never received anything from God. This Messiah you speak of, I am he. The first one was named Ramin. You were a woman of purity who was excited to be married. But he wasn't a good man. He hurt you. And it made you question marriage and even the practice of your faith. Stop it. The second was Farzad. On your wedding night, his skin smelled like oranges. And to this day, every time you pass by the oranges in the market, you feel guilty for leaving him because he was the only truly godly man you've been with. But you felt unworthy. Why are you doing this? I have not revealed myself to the public as the Messiah. You are the first. It would be good if you believed me. You picked the wrong person. I came to Samaria just to meet you. <laughs> Do you think it's an accident that I'm, I'm here in the middle of the day? I am rejected by others. I know, but not by the Messiah. And you know these things because you are the Christ. I'm going to tell everyone. I was counting on it. <laughs> Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. It won't be all about mountains or temples. Soon, just the heart. You promise? I promise. This man told me everything I've done. Oh, he must be the Christ! <laughs> Thanks for watching the Father's House Orville YouTube channel, but don't stop there. We'd love you to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a live service or a video. Help us spread the message of Jesus by sharing this video with your friends. You can also support the Father's House financially by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for watching today and we hope to see you again soon.